Once again, welcome everyone from Anand People's Medicare Society campus. Myself, Dr. Raktim Mukherjee, Assistant Professor and Head of the Department. Shri PM Patel Institute of PG Studies and Research in Science, affiliated to Sardar Patel University, Anand. The last segment of the talk, Regulation of Complement System. This segment becomes so important that often in Sardar Patel University, a question is asked, write a brief account on regulation of complement system. You are supposed to write how the complement system is regulated by various factors. This segment becomes all the more important for the reason a student who has understood all the three pathways, the classical, alternative and lectin, only that student will be in a position to understand the regulation of complement pathway. If you do not understand the original pathway, there is no sense in understanding or studying the regulation part. Whenever you talk about the regulation of complement system, the complement system is capable of attacking pathogen and host cell. Someone asks you that why complement system should be regulated because complement system can do both. It can become a surgeon or a good person or it can become a durjan or a bad person also. It can attack both your pathogen as well as your host cell. Attacking pathogen of course is a beneficial task because we want the microbes, the harmful organisms, the disease causing organisms to be eliminated. But what if the complement system targets your own host cell that is definitely going to be unpredictable injury for the cell. So to that end, we require complement system to be critically regulated and therefore the complement system, it is pertinent that the complement system should be very carefully regulated and there are two mechanisms for complement system to be regulated. Before I reveal the two system, a short question. You have a very naughty kid in your household. Okay, the kid will be always playing prank. What would you do so that the kid does not play prank? What would you do? Please answer. Someone can unmute and speak. You, he yes. Favorite thing. Yeah. So, when you are giving the favorite thing to the kid, you are keeping the kid literally engaged and by keeping the kid literally engaged with some activity, the kid will not be catastrophic. Similarly, there are two mechanisms. One mechanism, an another way is that one adult is there, okay, the kid is doing something, you supervise, okay, do not do this, please, you are not supposed to do, you are a good boy, like that. So, first is short half-life of the activated complement factors. Activated complement factors have shorter half-life. Why it is an advantage? If it is an activated component, if it is a more half-life, it can damage the cell. Shorter half-life, it comes and it gets degraded. It comes and it gets degraded. One Shararati Bacha or one very naughty kid, he stays with you just for a few minutes, you won't feel the kid's tantrum. But if the kid stays for extended duration, of course, you can fill the tantrum. So likewise, shorter half-life of activated complement factors is the first key regulatory factor. Second, the regulatory proteins. You have very good regulatory proteins. Even if the complement tries to play some mischief, the regulatory proteins will definitely have some discipline on the complement component. So this is how the complement components are regulated. So, one important concept is the difference in carbohydrate composition between the host and the microbial cell. Let us see. There is a difference in the cell surface carbohydrate composition between the host and the microbial cell. If you see on the host cell, if you can, can you see the branch structures? 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. It is a representative of course figure. The 
host cell the sialic acid content you can see the arrow it is more whereas on microbial cell the sialic acid content the carbohydrate content is less so this is a very clear cut distinction between the cell surface composition of the microbe and the host cell whenever you write regulation of complement system the complement system can be regulated at three level level 1 before the assembly of c3 convertase level 2 at the level of c3 convertase level 3 after the formation of c3 convertase i would just begin my lecture with an hypothetical situation that is very common in india imagine there is a road accident and you are passing through the same road where the accident has happened though you are not involved in the accident you always grow as a curious onlooker to check what exactly has happened now what happens you go to that particular spot and you see that it's not an accident rather two persons are quarreling amongst each other it may sometimes happen that though you are not a part of that particular quarrel just because you are seeing them quarreling one of them might get infuriated and might come to kicks and blows with you so what is the scenario you are a innocent onlooker you are simply not a part of the quarrel you have come to watch them what exactly is happening but in the process you got certain blows kicks or bullets this phenomenon is also called as innocent bystander lysis this happens even in host cell a host cell might get injured or might get killed by complement activation and therefore the complement should always be regulated if the complement system is not regulated it might always be possible that the host cell might get inadvertently affected by the complement system so what are the key points of regulation of complement complement is capable of attacking pathogen and host cell so that is the reason so what we want is an ideal situation that the complement should definitely attack the pathogen but it should spare the host cell and how it is possible this is possible only when the complement system is properly regulated so when you talk about the mechanism of uh, complement regulation there are two basic mechanisms or two major mechanisms one mechanism of course is short half life of activated complement factors when i say short half life of activated complement factors some of the activated complement factors the li life span is reduced and by reducing the life span the damage on the collateral damage i would say on the host cell is minimized uh let me give an analogous example to drive home the point short half life of activated complement factors one of the example that i would like to place on record is you have a destructive mentality children or very hyperactive children he might take the toys grab it break it even break some of your precious or fragile items at your place if the kid is there for minimum amount of time the damage is limited the same kid stays for one hour or more than that the damage is maximal so this is called as short half life of activated complement factors so you want the activated complement factors to be degraded that easily so that the half life is minimized by minimizing the half life you can always prevent the succeeding damage another of course is regulatory proteins regulatory proteins these are special category of proteins as the name suggests regulatory proteins they are the ones which will regulate the complement system and by regulating the complement system the regulatory proteins will exert its role in preventing damage to the host cell and making the pathogenic cells vulnerable to complement mediated lysis so that i gave the background of regulation of complement now what are the other reasons why complement system should be regulated 
one is potent positive feedback mechanism a complement system once it is activated it's a positive feedback loop and positive feedback loop as you know from the tenets of physiology positive feedback loop is very damaging it can damage the host cell very badly and therefore the complement system needs to be regulated another is absence of antigen specificity in the alternate pathway there is no antigen specificity in the alternate pathway so once the alternate pathway gets activated it can be catastrophic third point is the protection of vertebrate host cell damage is achieved by both general passive regulatory mechanism and there are specific active regulatory mechanisms and we will check both these regulatory mechanisms in detail during our further course of lecture uh, this is one of the uh, texts from Murley et al uh, 2015 research paper and this research paper uh, deals with all three pathways in nutshell you have alternative pathway which is a permanent low grade activity uh, the lectin pathway which has uh, mannose binding lectin and classical pathway classical pathway is activated by immune complexes and also by uh, deposition of uh, C1 inhibitor on the apoptotic cell once the classical pathway gets activated you can have uh, uh, the control of classical pathway by membrane cofactor of lysis a DK accelerating factor complement receptor type 1 and C4B binding protein likewise the lectin pathway can also get activated uh, by uh, binding of pathogen with the manan binding lectin and uh, one of the key step of lectin pathway C3B likewise the alternative pathway can get activated by permanent low grade activity of uh, uh, spontaneous hydrolysis of C3H2O here also pathogen gets activated and it can be regulated by factor H uh, MCP decay accelerating factor and CR1 and each of the three pathways whether it is alternate pathway whether it is lectin pathway or whether it is classical pathway all these three pathways meet at the level of C3 convertase uh, when I talk about C3 convertase uh, C3 convertase of classical pathway is different from that of uh, the C3 convertase of the alternative pathway uh, C3 convertase of classical pathway is C4B2B whereas uh, C3 convertase of the alternative pathway is C3B capital B small b uh, important point for students is that this C3 convertase activity acts as an amplification loop when I say amplification loop this loop is uh, produced over and over again and this amplification loop will pave way for opsonization or phagocytosis of pathogen or it can also pave way to interaction with adaptive immunity and this is one of the reason scientists often call innate complement mediated uh, immunity or complement system as a connecting link or bridge between the innate immunity and the adaptive immunity then you have a C5 convertase uh, of classical and alternative pathway and these convertases the C5 and uh, C3 paves way to C5 and C5 ultimately leads to the assembly of membrane attack complex uh, which is assembly of C5B, C6, C7, C8 and C9 and of course uh, interestingly uh, there are C5 convertases which converts C5 into C5A this C5A as well as the previous step C3A are potent anaphylotoxins and these anaphylotoxins what they do uh, they will recruit other immune cells uh, they will lead to endothelial or epithelial cell activation as well as platelet activation and the membrane attack complex uh, together with clostrin and vitronectin as the uh, uh, clostrin and vitronectin or CD59 they help in controlling this assembly of C9 and once C9 of course is assembled it will lead to membrane attack complex mediated bacterial lysis and the pathogen gets killed so this is a nutshell from the research paper of how all these three pathways act under regular circumstances but in today's lecture we will be concentrating on the regulation of complement pathway another important aspect a very interesting question you have the uh, immunoglobulin M the basic immunoglobulin uh, responsible for complement mediated lysis immunoglobulin M is pentameric structure and uh, this pentameric structure exists in a planar form once it exists in planar form it is not exposed and therefore uh, the host cell is not damaged 
whereas in pathogen the same immunoglobulin M uh, changes its conformation to stepal form and this stepal form is more accessible and once it becomes accessible it leads to complement mediated lysis. Let's summarize the uh, complement pathway before we go into regulation. You have C4, this is C1S, uh, the initial step C1QRS complex. The C1S acts on two substrate. One substrate of course is C2, another is C4. Here in this figure is C4 is shown. Once C1S acts on C4, you have C4 being fragmented into a larger fragment C4B and a smaller fragment C4A. C4A being the smaller fragment diffuses away. Likewise C2 is also cleaved by C1S into C2B the smaller fragment and C2A the larger fragment. Remember students in regular lecture I already told you that C2 is the only exception in case of C2 the B fragment is smaller and the A fragment is larger. The smaller fragment diffuses away that is C2B. You are left with C2A. This C2A combines with the previous step C4B to form as you see C4B2A. This C4B2A is also called as C3 convertase of classical pathway. The step goes further. C4B2A is an active C3 convertase. It cleaves C3 into C3A and C3B. So there it is. Uh, C3 convertase cleaves C3 into C3A and C3B. This C3B combines with the previous step C4B2A to form C4B2A3B or it is also called as C4B2A3B, the C5 convertase. As the name suggests, the C5 convertase, it will act on C5 for further cleavage. But before that, one molecule of C4B2A can cleave up to 1000 molecules of C3 into C3B. And many C3B molecules bind to the microbial surface. And this is the reason, often in immunology, we say that the formation of C3B is also called as auto amplification step. Why this step is so crucial, we will understand during our further course of the lecture on regulation of complement system. So relative instability of complement components, the host protects itself against extended period of inadvertent complement activation. The host will never allow inadvertent complement activation for extended period. Why? If this happens for extended period, it is likely that even the host cell will undergo complement mediated lysis. And as a checkpoint, C3 convertase of alternative pathway, the C3B capital B small b C3B, it has a half life of only 5 minutes. Of course, this will get degraded within 5 minutes unless it is stabilized by a reaction with properdin. So properdin is very important in regulation of C3 convertase of alternative pathway. Without properdin stabilization, the C3 convertase of alternative pathway will be immediately degraded without causing further damage since it has a half-life of only 5 minutes. Now some of the differences, we have a difference in the cell membrane or carbohydrate composition, the host and the microbial cell. In the host cell, the sialic acid is more, in microbial cell, the sialic acid is less. And since the host cell sialic acid is more, the host cell will not be immediately targeted by the fluid phase C3 convertase, whereas the microbial cell, owing to its low sialic acid content, will be easily targeted by the fluid phase C3 convertase of alternate pathway. Uh, remember students, we already talked earlier, alternative pathway is activated by three different pathways. One is takeover pathway, another is protease activated pathway and the third one of course is the 
protein activated pathway so sialic acid difference in uh, cell wall is a very important factor rendering protection to host cell and making the microbial cell more vulnerable to complement mediated lysis so this is the snapshot summary of all the complement regulatory pathways we have uh, dissociation of c1 components uh, you have a role of decay accelerating activity of c3 convertase factor i activity inhibition of lysis by protectin and finally cleavage of anaphylotoxins of course at this stage it will be difficult to understand all the uh, five regulatory mechanisms together so what i have done i have singled out each mechanism and we will study this in detail first let's go with c1 inhibitor the c1 inhibitor promotes dissociation of c1 components uh, it's just like what you call in uh, colloquial vernacular language or hindi as kebab mein hatti so anyone the two couples won't be allowed to meet by this inhibitory element so one such inhibitory element in case of uh, complement system especially is classical pathway c1 inhibitor which promotes dissociation of c1 components remember students c1 com is a complex of uh, c1q c1r and c1s and in the very first step c1q binds to c1r r in turn activates s until c1s becomes a active serine protease this things you have already studied in our regular complement system lecture now how it is going to help in regulation let's see first of all what is c1 inhibitor it's a plasma protein that binds to active site of serine protease by binding to the active site of serine protease it simply stops the protease activity or it poisons them so no longer c1s has any role in protease activity further c1 inhibitor is a serine protease inhibitor this group of proteins which are called as serine protease inhibitors are also abbreviated as serpins it forms complex with protease c1r2s2 and once it forms complex with protease c1r2s2 this c1r2s2 dissociates from c1q by dissociating from c1q it prevents the complement system from further activation or i would say it arrests the complement system in the very first step itself since the complement system is arrested in the very first step the subsequent or most important step of classical pathway because c1as acts as a common substrate for c4 as well as c2 something which we saw few minutes before so that particular action of uh the c1 complex especially c1s on c4 and c2 is prevented by c1 inhibitor c1 inhibitor inhibits serine protease of lectin pathway also and uh, one of the serine protease of lectin pathway is masp2 so c1 inhibitor thus is the only regulatory protein capable of inhibiting the initiation of both classical as well as the lectin pathway so c1 inhibitor can have the has the capacity to block both classical as well as the lectin pathway now what is the regulation of complement activity the c1 inhibitor promotes dissociation of c1 components it binds in the active site of serine protease as we saw causes c1r2s2 to dissociate no further cleavage is possible and thus is inhibits initiation of classical as well as lectin complement pathways let's see this in detail that uh, you have the c1 uh, component c1r2s2 you have c1 inhibitor and this c1 inhibitor uh, prevents uh, c1q from associating with c1r2s2 since association is not possible the complement system is arrested in this very first initial stage next uh, means of regulation is by dk accelerating factor what dk accelerating factor does dk accelerating factor promotes dk of c3 convertase so let's no, brush up the normal pathway uh, c4 and c2 are acted upon by the complement system in case of c4 c4a diffuses away c4b remains whereas in case of c2 uh, the c2 b diffuses away and c2a remains so c4b2a is the c3 convertase 
and this C3 convert is its decay is accelerated once the decay is accelerated it will lead to uh, further regulation of the complement pathway let's see so C3 convertase enzyme the reaction is catalyzed by C3 convertase which is a major amplification step in the complement activation I just said that once C3 convertase acts on C3 it breaks, breaks C3 into C3A the smaller component which diffuses away C3B is an auto amplification step and so many molecules maybe hundreds and thousands of molecules of C3B is produced and each of this C3B molecule uh, deposits on the pathogen surface once it deposits on the pathogen surface the complement system gets activated so C4B2A is the C3 convertase of classical pathway whereas C3B capital B small b is the C3 convertase of alternative pathway now let's see the role of decay accelerating factor in the classical pathway the membrane bound decay accelerating factor or DAF accelerates the decay of C4B2A that is C3 convertase of classical pathway on the surface of host cell and for this it requires CR1 complement receptor type 1 and C4B binding protein that is C4B capital B capital P and what this does it promotes the decay of C3 convertases as you see C4B2A under the influence of decay accelerating factor CR1 and C4B binding protein it breaks this uh, C3 convertase C4B2A into two separate components C4B and C2A. So these DK accelerating proteins cooperate to accelerate the breakdown of C4B2A into separate components. Let's see, this is the C4B2A of classical pathway. Under the influence of DK accelerating factor, a CR1 complement receptor type 1 and C4B binding protein, it breaks C4B2A into two separate components. C4B and C2A. Let's see in alternative pathway the membrane bound decay accelerating factor accelerates the decay of C3B capital B small b. This is the C3 convertase of alternative pathway. And when it gets uh, into action, it's only when this C3B capital B small b is on the surface of host cell. And for that, it requires CR1 complement receptor type 1. Factor H. Factor H is 155 kilodalton soluble glycoprotein. Factor H binds negatively charged cell surface sialic acid and heparin molecule. This is unique to eukaryotic cell surface. A prokaryotic cell surface, since the sialic acid content is different, its binding capacity is also not full. Further, it promotes the decay of C3 convertase by alternative pathway. So you have the C3B capital B small b, the alternative pathway. Under the influence of decay accelerating factor CR1 and factor H, it cleaves C3B capital B small b into two separate components C3B and capital B small b. Now let's see something about uh, your factor H. Uh, the principal function of factor H is to regulate the alternative pathway of complement system. And what factor H does? First of all, it ensures that the complement system is directed towards the pathogen or other dangerous material. You always have complement system towards the ugly part of the immune system. Never should complement system affect the host tissue. So, factor H ensures that the complement system is directed towards pathogen or other dangerous material and that the complement system does not damage the host tissue. And to this end, how it does? Factor H regulates complement activation on self cells and surfaces. How it regulates? The self cells or surfaces possesses both cofactor activity for factor I mediated by C3B cleavage. Moreover, decay accelerating activity against the alternative pathway C3 convertase that is C3B capital B small b. So what factor H does? It exerts its protective action on self cells and self surfaces but not on the surface of bacteria or viruses. This is very important for students that factor H exists is protective action on self cell and self surfaces but not on surfaces of bacteria or 
the viruses. So decay accelerating factor in classical and alternative pathway, the decay accelerating activity to summarize uh, in classical pathway decay accelerating factor together with CR1 and C4B binding protein breaks C4B2A into C4B and C2A. Whereas in alternative pathway, the same decay accelerating factor together with factor H breaks C3B capital B small b into C3B and capital B small b. Now let's study some interesting facts about C4B binding protein or C4B capital B small p. It's a preferentially bound to host cell membrane proteoglycans such as heparin sulfate. And this is the reason once C4B binding protein preferentially binds to the host membrane, the host cells are protected from deposition of complement components. Whereas the same C4B binding protein, once it binds on the microbial invaders, which microbial invaders? The microbial invaders that lack decay accelerating factor and complement receptor type 1 expression. Once it binds to the microbial surface, it failed to bind to factor H or C4 binding protein. And once it is unable to bind, it is becomes vulnerable to complement mediated attack. So complement mediated attack is mostly on microbial invaders. The regular cell is often spared from complement mediated lysis or complement mediated attack. Well, this is from Erman's famous research paper from Immunology Late Letters. Uh, I will li first like you to go to the uh, second part of the diagram. You have the pathogen shown in yellow, polymorpho neutrophils, then you have the C4 binding protein in spider shaped structure. So, this is the pathogen. If C4B binding protein binds to the pathogen, see, look here. C4B binding protein binds to the pathogen. If it binds to the pathogen, the pathogen will survive. It will colonize. It will grow into uh, a huge colony of pathogen. Uh, likewise, if complement activation and immune recognition takes place, then the pathogen will undergo a lysis. Especially this lysis is complement mediated lysis. Further, when you study uh, the C4B binding protein, there are some of the known binding partners of C4B binding protein. It can bind to pathogen shown in red. It can bind to cells shown in yellow. It can bind to extracellular matrix shown in light shades of blue, plasma proteins in blue as well as amyloid in orange. And uh, so C4 binding protein is a versatile protein capable of binding to several partners and after binding to several partners, it can enact its role in the complement system. Next level of regulation, first was uh, C1 inhibitor, second was DK accelerating factor, the third one of course is factor I and this factor I degrades C3B and C4B because in the previous step, what we did, DK accelerating factor accelerated the decay of C3 convertase. When I say C3 convertase, both the C3 convertase of classical pathway, that is C4B2A, as well as C3B, the C3 convertase of alternative pathway, uh, C4B2A, 3B. That is not suffice or not sufficient. Factor I further safeguards the process when it degrades the C3B and C4B so that it can never ever recombine further once it is uh, the binding sites are gone, it is gone forever. So how factor I degrades C3B and C4B? Factor H, C4B binding protein, CR1, are as acts as cofactors in the second mechanism of complement regulation that are catalyzed by factor I. Factor I is a soluble constitutive active serine protease that can cleave membrane associated C3B and C4B into inactive fragments. So that is the role of factor I which constitutively expressed serine protease can cleave membrane associated C3B and C4B into inactive fragments. But how the complement cascades ever succeed 
in destroying the invading microbes let's have a snapshot summary on the scene factor i is indeed soluble when i say factor i is soluble it is constitutively active and designed to destroy c3b and c4b but factor i is required in the presence of the same host specific cofactors in order to function if it is not on the host but it is on the pathogen it would be difficult for its function rather it won't function therefore the cleavage of membrane bound c3b on host cell is conducted by factor i but not alone it is conducted with collaboration with the membrane bound mcp the membrane cofactor of proteolysis and complement receptor 1 and soluble factor factor h so these are the complement cascades similarly cleavage of membrane bound c4b is achieved again by factor i but this time with uh, collaboration with membrane bound uh, mcp and cr1 so these membrane bound or membrane binding cofactors are not found on microbial cell since it is not found on microbial cell c3b and c4b are destroyed if they alight on host cell so c4b and c3b are destroyed if it alights on host cell but if it alights on microbial cell it will exert specific action such as activation of the complement system factor h latest research suggests there are six proteins related to factor h and their activities and regulation are under careful in investigation interestingly some of the genetic variations of factor h and related proteins have been associated with chronic inflammatory diseases such as age related macular degeneration when we talk about mcp expression the variation in mcp expression has been implicated as a factor that control apoptosis followed by uh, phagocytosis when a t cell commits to apoptosis it expresses dna on its cell membrane that binds circulating c1q it then begins to shed mcp on the cell surface only after mcp is lost then can the progression of classical pathway occur resulting in opsonization of c3b and eventual phagocytosis of the apoptotic uh, t cells so regulation of complement activity factor i cofactor activity in classical pathway classical pathway you have c4b 2a Uh, dk accelerating factor cr1 and c4b binding protein breaks c4b2a into separate fragments c4b and c2a so now c4b under the influence of factor i together with membrane cofactors of proteolysis cr1 complement receptor type 1 and c4b binding protein it further breaks c4b into c4c and c4d thus the fragments will never be in a position to rejoin so activity of c3 convertase is permanently lost not only lost it is also cleaved further in classical pathway into c4c and c4d under the influence of factor i together with mcp cr1 and c4b binding protein factor i cofactor activity in alternative pathway you have c3b under the influence of factor i mcp cr1 it breaks c3b just like in classical pathway but here in alternative pathway it breaks c3 into c3c inhibitory c3b and c3dg all three are having separate characteristics now comes the last level of regulation you have cd459 also called as protectin this protectin inhibits the membrane attack complex is the last resort everything is possible still the complement system can be regulated at the level of membrane attack complex no formation of membrane attack complex no complement mediated lysis and no complement mediated lysis the host cell can always be protected from that of a pathogen so if the complement gets activated there will be robust antibody response very high degree of antibody response a uh, high degree of inflammatory response and this will be accompanied by extensive complement activation
so inappropriate assembly of membrane attack complex on healthy cells can potentially occur and this may result in inadvertent host cell destruction we cannot afford the host cells to get destroyed by the we cannot afford the host cell to get destroyed by membrane attack complex by preventing the host cell uh, how can we prevent the host cell from destruction by membrane attack complex uh, it can be done by tightly regulating the complement pathway we have already seen at three levels c1 inhibitor level tk accelerating factor level at the level of factor i and now we will see the last step that is at the level of membrane attack complex then some of the latest research that has come up at the level of the anaphylotoxins so what is cd59 many of your textbooks doesn't give what is cd59 so i thought i should give some brief idea of cd59 cd59 is also cluster of differentiation 59 is given another name protectin it's a glycoprotein there are several other names for this glycoprotein it is also known named as MAC inhibitory protein, also called as membrane inhibitor of reactive lysis, MIRL or simply MRL. And as most of the textbooks and research papers tell, it is also called as protectin. Uh, for the sake of simplicity, in our lecture, we will be using the term protectin for the rest of the topic. So CD59 protectin attaches the host cell via glycophosphatidyl inositol or GPI anchor. When the complement activation leads to deposition of the uh, remaining complement components such as C5, B678, not C9, remember because C9 is the last or ultimate step. So when the complement activation leads to deposition of C5, B678 complex on host cell, this protectin can prevent C9 and from polymerizing. No protectin means no C9 polymerization and the well is not formed and it can also when I say well I refer to the membrane attack complex so no formation of membrane attack complex alternatively or in other way the CD59 also signals the cell and what it signals to the cell it signals to the cell to perform active measures such as endocytosis it endocytosis of CD59 and the CD9 complex. In our earlier lecture, I already talked that There is a disease called as paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria where kidney is damaged because of the uh, lysis of RBCs. So when you talk about protectin, uh, protectin and DK accelerating factor are membrane associated molecules. These are attached to the lipid bilayer via GPI anchor. Sometimes there is a rare mutation in the gene that is PIGA gene. Uh, the, this PIGA gene mutation uh, prevent afflicted individuals from attaching the anchors. Once the anchors are not attached, the patients suffer from dysregulation of complement activity. One such example is uh, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria (PH). So this is it: uh, defective uh, healthy RBC (PIGA) and uh, GPI anchor is there for the protectin, no hemolysis. Uh, if PIGA is mutant, uh, you can see the hemolysis and thrombosis and uh, this is a double mutant on chromosome 2T. This also results in thrombosis or autoimmune inflammation. So this is a documentary proof that paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria is associated with uh, both G DK accelerating factor as well as uh, GPI anchor deficiency, a role of 
CD59. GPI anchor is not present. CD59 won't be able to bind. Uh, this is from Molecular Immunology, one of the very classical research papers, signals, cell signals transduced by complement. And based on this paper, I would like to give certain additional examples. And this very interesting part is, uh, we think that the host cell has designed a very good complement regulation. But remember, the tiny microbes such as viruses are more clever than the host cells or humans. Viruses such as HIV, human, cytomegalovirus, the vaccinia virus, what they do, they incorporate host cell CD59 into their own viral envelope. And by incorporating the host cell CD59 or protecting into their viral envelope, these viruses which, would other, which otherwise should have undergone complement mediated lysis simply evades the complement mediated lysis and the virus survives and thus what the viruses do as a mechanism of evasion strategy they deposit cd59 on their surface and even uh, evade the complement mediated lysis soluble complement s protein is there that is also called as vitronectin vitronectin binds to any fluid phase c5b67 complex from microbial cell and by binding it prevents the insertion into the host cell membrane thus another way of regulation the host cell if it prevents insertion c5b67 is not inserted automatically there won't be any c9 polymerization so in other words you are simply preventing formation of membrane attack complex on the host cells so this is the diagrammatic representation you have c5 b6 7 8 complex you have protectin and vitronectin together with s protein shown in the form of umbrella that everything is present but c9 polymerization doesn't take place once c9 polymerization doesn't take place the membrane attack complex is not formed no membrane attack complex no lysis of pathogen and the pathogen gets scot free it escapes the complement mediated lysis likewise even the host cell is prevented from complement mediated lysis by regulation of the complement pathway last but not the least is the new addition it was not there in the earlier additions so carboxypeptidases can inactivate the anaphylotoxin certain background information both in classical as well as alternate pathway we have the components of c3 con that is c3a and another component of c5a both are potent anaphylotoxins when i say potent anaphylotoxins i always refer to the students that these anaphylotoxins has a very important role in another very important applied chapter that is uh, the hypersensitivity so these anaphylotoxins promote inflammation so carboxypeptidases can inactivate this anaphylotoxins Anaphylotoxins are inactivated, no inflammatory reaction and the complement system is prevented from doing catastrophic damage. So how it's done? Rapid inactivation of anaphylotoxin. This is regulated by cleavage of the C terminus of arginine residues from uh, C3A from C3 convertase activity and C5A from C5 convertase activity. Uh, this is done by serum carboxypeptidase. And this serum carboxypeptidase result in rapid inactivation of anaphylotoxin activity. By rapid inactivation of anaphylotoxin activity, the potent inflammatory reaction is prevented to happen on the host cell. Remember, inflammation is a double-edged sword. A slight minute amount of inflammation is beneficial, but large amount of inflammatory reaction can cause collateral tissue damage. So therefore, it needs to be regulated. So these enzymes remove arginine residues from carboxy terminus of C3A and C5A. Uh, this is called as desarginine, that is without arginine, the inactive form of the molecule. In addition, as mentioned above, the binding of C5A, in fact, there are two types of receptor. The latest research paper says one is C5AR, that is the regular receptor. Another receptor is C5L2. The C5L2 serves to modulate the inflammatory activity of C5A. Thus, you can control inflammatory activity of C5A by rapid inactivation of the anaphylotoxins. What are carboxypeptidases? 
those who have studied enzymology you might be aware carboxypeptide is a general class of enzymes that remove amino acid from carboxy terminus of proteins the specific enzymes mediate the control of anaphylotoxin activity of carboxypeptidase both n b and r isoforms okay so the regulation of complement activity carboxypeptidase can inactivate anaphylotoxin c3a and c5a it removes arginine residues from c terminus of c3a and c5a so what this does let's see diagrammatically c3a and c5a c3a of c3 convertase c5a of c5 convertase the smaller fragments uh, carboxypeptidase n b and r it what it does it will create the des arginine form and inactivate this anaphylotoxins once the anaphylotoxins are inactivated it won't be in a position to generate inflammatory response now let's understand some of the proteins involved in uh, the regulation of complement system you have a c1 inhibitor we have already seen c1 inhibitor it's a soluble membrane bound protein it's a, a soluble protein found in both classical and lectin pathway it induces dissociation and initiation of c1 r2s uh, that is the first step of regulation dk accelerating factor is a membrane bound it controls both classical alternative as well as lectin pathway complement receptor type 1 is a membrane bound factor it also controls the classical alternative and lectin pathway it blocks the formation or accelerates the dissociation of c3 convertase c4b binding protein always called as friend on foe friend or foe by the research paper it's a soluble factor found in classical and lectin pathway c4b binding protein blocks formation of or ac accelerates the dissociation of c4b2a of c3 convertase cofactor for factor i in c4 degradation factor h uh, also soluble in alternative pathway it blocks formation or accelerates the dissociation of c3 b capital b small b c3 convertase and in every other pathways it acts as a cofactor for factor i in c3b degradation further your factor i uh, which is soluble membrane cofactor of proteolysis mcp membrane bound again in classical alternative and lectin pathway it's a cofactor for factor i and helps in degradation of c3b and c4b s protein uh, and protectin we already saw in the current uh, previous slide it binds to c4b 6 7 complex and prevents its insertion whereas protectin uh, blocks polymerization of c9 carboxypeptidase n b and r it degrades or cleaves or inactivates the anaphylotoxin c3 and c5a some of the functions of complement it enhances the immune response it also leads to membrane attack complex which lyses the gram negative bacteria parasites erythrocytes and nucleated cell uh, students one important point i would like to tell that compared to gram negative bacteria the gram positive bacteria is more susceptible to complement uh, more resistant to complement mediated lysis why because the gram positive bacteria has a thick peptidoglycan layer and you know a complement system exerts lots of pressure in drilling a hole or a formation of membrane attack complex on the gram positive bacteria is a tougher task as compared to gram negative bacteria which has relatively a thin layer of peptidoglycan some of the diverse function of complement complement receptor connects complement tag pathogen to effect a cell uh, you have cr1 on leukocytes and erythrocytes uh, i will go in a diagrammatic way that uh, on erythrocyte it helps to bring the immune complexes the liver for clearance of phagocytosis when on phagocytes uh, it helps to bind the complement coated bacteria to enhance ingestion on b cell it helps to bind complement coated antigen and thus enhancing the ingestion for processing and presentation to helper t cells uh, this is the diagram you have the blood soluble immune complexes this leads to complement activation you have multiple uh, auto amplification of c3b uh, lots of c3b uh, gets deposited on the surface of the erythrocyte you have complement receptor type 1 and these complexes are, are transported to the liver of the spleen and uh, it enhances the phagocytosis
or promotes opsonization. It pr promotes inflammation as well as it promotes opsonization. Once it opsonizes, it becomes easier for the microbes to destroy, whereas the opsonized immune complexes is very easy to clear uh, for the pathogen. There are diverse functions of complement. Uh, there are CR2 on B cells. It binds to C3B opsonized bacteria or antigen and it helps to provide secondary signal to B cell through BCR complex for efficient activation. There it is, the uh, CD21 of CR2 and this helps in the B cell activation. C3A or C3-35A receptor on granulocytes it stimulates the release of pro-inflammatory cytokine uh, from granule components from basophil, eosinophil and neutrophil, they themselves are anti-helminthic as well as anti-pathogenic. So it regulates the anaphylotoxin or inflammatory signaling pathway. Some of the complement deficiencies, genetic deficiencies have been described for each of the complement components. Some of the outcomes may vary. Patients with immune complex disorder due to inadequate clearance, uh, they are always susceptible to infection. Whereas, when complement system is overactivated, it will lead to the uh, damage to the host cell. Animal models are available for further studies. Lots of research is being done. So, to summarize this regulation as well as the complement chapter, uh, the complement system serves as many different purposes, helps to link innate and adaptive immune response. It is tightly controlled but enhances many other response once activated. Complement system provides window into the evolution of immunity. Understanding the system and its methods of activation and regulation helps us to better understand the innate immunity and evolution. Uh, uh, let me take this opportunity to acknowledge my student and current faculty, Ms. Megha Dave, for helping me with the compilation of this presentation as well as some of the question banks which she has prepared for students' benefit.